Hello, I'm Bob Lynch, operating out of Ford's Gym, Madison, Wisconsin. Gonna take you through the fundamentals of boxing. We're gonna put it in a four lesson form. So we'll be condensing an awful lot of things. It's gonna be pretty superficial, but we're gonna let you know how a boxer places his or her feet, how he places his hands, how he throws four or five basic punches, how he puts those punches together in various combinations, and how he would defend against an opponent throwing punches. The, we'll break it down into just four sections, calling them lessons one, two, three, and four, and they'll have it all together. Boxer is gonna wrap his hands. First of all, let's think of what we're gonna do and why. We're gonna to try to protect the hands from broken bone. So basically, we're gonna build up most heavily over the knuckles. A secondary thing we're doing is giving the wrist a little stability. And the third thing will be to pull the thumb in a little toward the lead finger. Obviously, the very most important is building up over the punching surface. So loop that over the thumb and start going over the back of your hand, maybe three times around your wrist. So at this point, don't be pulling anything tightly. It's better to have it too loose than too tight. Then start over here, going up through the punching area. So we're gonna go work it maybe four or five passes overlapping the previous one by about a third or a half of it. One more time maybe around there, then start working your way back toward your wrist. Make a fist a couple times, make sure we don't have it too tight. Looks like it's going to be okay. Good. And then go around the thumb 360 degrees and then pull that back toward the little finger. Back in here, good. One more time around, finish up on your wrist if you can. There you go. Well, that looks like a pretty good wrap. There's one further embellishment you can do if you happen to have uh, adhesive tape, make strips here between the fingers, basically to pull this down so that it doesn't get pushed back up when you put a glove on. But essentially, we've protected this area, stiffened the wrist a little bit, and pulled the thumb in a little toward the first finger. Now do the same thing on your right hand, and we'll see if we get that good. There you go. Okay. And if we have adhesive tape handy, here's what we can do. Starting here, pulling it in and under. A second one here, pulling it in and under. Same thing here. And then we bind it down keeping up behind the knuckles because most for amateur boxing at least they won't let us put tape right directly over the punching surface. So we keep it right down behind that. Which way does the hand turn? Here, okay. That's a pretty decent training wrap there. The idea of the shadow boxing is for a boxer to 
be warming up, loosening up, getting his temperature up a bit, heartbeat up a bit, simulating the things that he's going to be doing when he's in with a live opponent. So he's going to be moving around, keeping his hands high, <coughs> acting as though he has an invisible live opponent in front of him. He's going to put out straight punches, not as hard as one would normally be doing, but then he'll put them together in pretty quick sequences also. Moving around a bit in space, he'll probably go near the ropes, get a feel for them. Good. Into a corner, maybe throwing a couple of punches at the corner pad that's directly behind him. Just a couple of punches there, get a feel for it. Good. Moving out and around again. Good. Good. Sometimes shaking out the arms, every kind of thing he might not get a chance to do in with a live opponent. But the object of this right now is simply to get him loosened up and warmed up and simulating actual punches. When you're stepping as a boxer, we never get on the heel on the front foot. Be sure that all of our movement is on the ball of the foot. We don't have to have a big gap under there. The heel can actually be touching at times, but we never get any weight on our forward heel. You can imagine stepping toward an opponent. You land with the heel down just as his punch is coming toward you. I haven't been able to find anybody on this planet that can push off of their heel. So what would happen, we'll have to go forward, get hit, and then can move back when it's too late. So those are the kind of things we stress, is working on the ball of your feet, heels touching the floor occasionally, but not bearing any weight on your heels at any time during a live round. And we're usually gonna do our shadow boxing two o'clock. We wanna do a three minute round shadow boxing, take most of the minute rest, do another three minute round, take most of that rest, and then do a three minute round, maybe including a rest at the end of it. And then you've got the equivalent of about 10 minutes of shadow boxing. Then you're ready to get out of the ring and get um, a pair of gloves on and be ready for either doing your, your sparring work or hand pad work with a coach or then transitioning to the bags. But the shadow boxing serves its function to loosen you up and warm you up, getting you simulating the kind of punches you're going to be throwing. You can be doing a little more defensive maneuvering of your upper body too. Good. Now it's easy to pick up a bad habit of hitting the bag and dragging the hand back low. Out and back, same speed. Out and back, same horizontals, plane. So that's it, good. Move your feet after every combination, one direction or another. Normally you like to see do about three high speed rounds on the heavy bag. Good. Good. Yeah. yeah. Heavy bags are a big part of every boxer's workout. In fact, if there's one thing, they're probably the one that's overdone. Big bags are hard on hands. Over a period of time, they really do eat hands. So you have to be sure you have your hands wrapped well and everything and don't try to punch real hard on a heavy bag. You can unload your heavy punches on the double end bags, but on, not on the heavy bags. Dig in, good combinations, stay busy. They'll certainly tire you but don't try to crack real hard. Good. Speed bag is very valuable for helping you aerobically. It also is real good for forcing you to keep your hands high. If you drop a hand down as you're punching it, you're probably gonna miss the bag on the next sequence. So keep the hands up high. <coughs> and bring them back in a defensive position after you landed several strikes on the bag. 
And don't try to punch these bags real hard. They're designed to help you develop speed, not necessarily power. Every workout, when you've done your heavy work, come and try to finish up with a couple of rounds, possibly two or three rounds on a speed bag. Real good way to flush out lactic acid out of your muscles by working them very quickly at a high rate of speed. But, heavy, but speed bags are very, very valuable. Okay, double end bag. Real good for hitting a moving target. And it forces you to move your head and shoulders out of the way of the bag when the bag comes flying back at you also. So there's real good value in double end bags. If you can consistently hit it with a one, two, three, you're either doing well or you're lucky like I just was on that sequence. But a double end bag is good for developing hand-eye coordination and some helping some aerobic value as well. In lesson one, we're gonna show you how a boxer should place his or her feet in a basic stance that he's gonna to wanna to be in all the time that you're in a boxing match. We're gonna place our feet with a right-handed boxer would have his or her feet, <coughs> his right foot back and his left foot forward, much like a baseball batter would be. Aim toward the opponent, step toward him, and then your rear foot back about 18 inches to 24 inches the way you are now. Check by shifting your weight, one foot to the other, see if it's comfortable. And we try to keep our, our sails with approximately half of our weight on each foot. After we step with one foot, the other foot must immediately follow same distance, same direction that the lead foot went. You may want to have your feet a tiny bit further apart. As you step, yeah, you do. And remember, we carry no weight on the heels. We don't have to be up on our toes. We just, if the heels are touching, we'd be sure that we don't have any weight on them. Reason for that being, we want to be able to rotate and turn the, the shoe in order to emphasize and get the more power on our punches. I take a step to the rear. Bring the foot. One more step to the rear. Step to your left. Step to your right. Step forward. Good. Step forward another bit. Good, good, good. Now you're in position where you want to be. Next, once we have our feet placed correctly, we're in good balance, we'll start bringing our hands into the action. A right-handed boxer with our left foot forward is now going to raise our left hand up till we're looking over the top of our glove <coughs> and having the elbow pretty much straight under the fist. The things we want to avoid is having the elbow too high, having the hand turned in any way that it doesn't belong, have it in a good natural position at about cheekbone level. With that done, we then bring our power hand up, bring that up to the right side cheekbone. Our fists, our forearms should look a bit like a pair of goalposts. The top of them up about cheekbone level, our elbows just above our waist level. Okay, the mechanics of the one, bringing the elbow straight toward the ceiling, should extend the hand out, pronate just before impact, bring your chin over toward your deltoid, so you got the left eye and right eye, both the same equidistance from the target you're trying to hit. Punch goes out and comes back at the same speed. It goes out and comes back on the same horizontal plane. Our common problems are a quick punch out but is dragged back slowly or dragged back low. So we want it out and back on the same horizontal plane, out and back at the same speed. Good, good, good. Pronate it a little more on impact. It'll bring the deltoid up better. There we go. Hands up, good. You're gonna shoot the one by bringing that elbow 
straight toward the ceiling, pronate it just before impact. Slow motion, good. Chin touching the deltoid, good. Bring it back, same level it went out, good. One, 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 one. Double up, one, one. Good, triple it. Good, one, one, one. A little more turn with it if you can. One, 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 good. If the opponent is shooting a one toward you, bring your right glove out, open it a bit to catch the punch here. That is the catch. The second thing is to parry it, to push it across in front of your left hand if you can. Good. The third is an inside slip so you're gonna be slipping inside of the opponent's one. Keep the lower half of your body pretty much in place. Just throw the torso over that way. Good, opponent's punch should go over your shoulder. Inside slip, the corollary to that is the outside slip. Good, so bend right here, throwing your torso off to the right. Then we duck straight under by dropping our butt toward the floor, and the step away. Step back, good. Come forward. We're gonna do the six defenses in a row. Catch the opponent's one. Parry the opponent's one. Slip inside the opponent's one. Slip outside the opponent's one. Duck under the opponent's one. Step away from the opponent's one. <coughs> That's throwing the one and defending against the opponent's one. We've completed lesson one. We're gonna move now into lesson two. Essentially, it's throwing the punches with our power hand. For us right-handers, that is our right hand. We wanna be sure that we are in good balance, approximately 50% of the weight on each foot. And the way we're gonna throw that two is by pushing off of our rear foot, bringing our right hip around as though we're planning to hit the opponent with the hip and then letting the right fist come straight out. Looks like pretty good balance. Shifted the weight a bit over the forward foot and that's all right. Not leaning forward, but just getting the, bringing the weight a little over the forward foot, protecting his face on that side from the opponent's two. Landing with palm toward the floor pronating that punch right before impact, and really whipping that hip into the punch. Good, good, good. Two, good, two, nice and slow. I want that heel kicking way over that way. Two, good, kick it out like that. Two, there we go. Two, 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 two. Try not to step away, okay. step more toward your target. Two, 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 two. Those are good. Bringing it back quick and fast and high. Our third punch we're going to be throwing is the three. When we've thrown the three, landed or missed, we drop the elbow down and we're back into our defensive position. We have to be several inches closer to the opponent throwing the three than we have been throwing the one and the two. The way it's normally going to be thrown is after we have thrown a two. As we bring the two back, we start accelerating that left shoulder forward, get the arm into a 90 degree position and then pull the punch through the opponent's head. Three, 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 there you go. Three, three, those are excellent. We've talked about the one and the defenses to the one. The two, the defenses to the two. You've learned how to throw the, a correct three. The defenses to the opponent's three having that fist up in this position alongside your right cheekbone 
be sure to have it in position to catch the opponent's punch to the head, to your head, on the outside of your glove. If he or she is going to your liver, your body, simply bring that elbow in, chopping it down a bit if you have to. But to defend against the opponent's threes is done all with your right hand, right elbow, right forearm. Bringing that down to catch the body punches or sliding it up to catch the punches toward your temple. The opponent's throwing a three. You're gonna defend that with the outside of the glove on your right hand. So slide that up a little bit, however much is needed. Good. The opponent may be trying to go to your liver, simply guillotine, drop that straight down. Chop straight down with it as you turn. There you go. Good. Good. Let the opponent wreck his hand against your elbow. So slide it up or down as need be. <coughs> Good. Now you can slide up and block the opponent's three and counter with your three. You can drop down, counter the opponent's three to the body, and counter with your three. But dealing with the opponent's three, blocking them, does set you in good body position to throw your three. We're now into lesson four in our four lesson program. Lesson one, you dealt with the lead hand punches. Lesson two was your power punch hand. Lesson three was the hook. And lesson four is going to be the uppercuts. First one, lesson four is throwing the four. The way we start that is the, by bringing the right hand down toward our thigh as we turn the body, start to rotate it, and then bring this straight up the middle as much as we can. So from our cheekbone, we're describing a little loop and bringing that punch up. Good, good, good. And you're gonna throw that often after you have blocked uh, an opponent's two or an opponent's four. There we go. Good. And then the way we embellish that a little bit, as we're dropping the right hand toward our thigh, also dip down with the legs a bit, and as the fist starts to come up, bring the legs up. Bring the legs up into a standing position as you're bringing the right hand up. There you go. So you get the quads helping with the power on the four. There we go, good. Good. You step over to your left once and bring the uppercut. Good. Good. So we're going to shoot the five by bringing that left hand and the left shoulder down toward the left thigh. And as we do, start turning the hip and kicking the heel out toward that direction. Good. And you're bringing the five up to land either at the opponent's liver or, or coming straight up the opponent's body up under his chin. Good. Don't let the feet get too wide apart on this. Good. You often will slip outside of an opponent's two and then rip the five. Good. Good. And remember, if we move that left foot at all, we want to compensate by also bringing the right foot same distance we moved the left foot. Slip outside of my two and bring your five. Good. This guy has to come same distance. Good. 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 Okay. Now throw a four and then a five. Good. Four, five. Four, five. Good. Five, four. Oop, five, four. There you go, five, four. Good, just getting the idea of slipping a little bit each way to make the opponent miss and then bringing your uppercut. Good, <coughs> good. Defenses to the opponent's four and five is simply bringing the elbows in. If the opponent's throwing a lead five with his, his or her left hand, if the power is coming with the right hand, we simply rotate the body and take that punch 
off of the elbow, the forearm, or the back of our glove. Defenses to the opponent. If he's throwing a four, a right hand uppercut, turn your body in a little bit, take it off of the left forearm, left elbow. If he's throwing a five, dip that in to protect your liver and take it off of the elbow. You may even have to lower the hand down a little bit. If you do have to, do. Good, good. And when you block either the four or the five, you come back with your punch from that hand. There you go. Good. 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 Okay. Four, five. That was a five, four, but it's still same number. Four, five. Four, five. Four, five. Four, five. Five, four. Good. Counter your opponent's uppercut. If he's thrown a right hand, take it here and then shoot your two right back. Boom, boom. That's it. Good. You're turning in a little bit, so you chamber the two and bring it back. Good. The form looks real good on that. Good. Now just the opposite. Turn in and block the opponent's five and bring your three. Open that up a little more on the three. That's it. Not realistic that you'll have the opponent right up on your face. Good. Okay, we're gonna review all of the five punches rather quickly. Throwing the one. Bring that elbow up, pop the one out there. Good, good. Okay. Defend against the opponent throwing imaginary one. Catch it. Catch the punch, catch it and come back with your one. Good. Parry it. Parry it and come back with your one. Good. Slip outside of the opponent's one. Keep both hands at home. S slip inside of the opponent's one. Good. Duck straight under the opponent's one. Step back from the opponent's one. Step back. Come right back with your punch. With, with the one. There you go. Step back from a one. Come back and counter with your one. Good. Defense is to the one. Catch it with your right glove now. Catch it. Open that glove up. Good. Parry it with your right glove now. Good. Slip outside of it now. Good. Slip inside of it. Good. Duck straight under it. Good. Step back from it. Good. Those are the five defenses. Again, catch it. Parry it. Slip outside of it. <laughs> Slip inside. Duck under it and step back away from it. Good. Defense is to the opponent. Two. Bring that fist up. Block it here. If the punch is coming in, parry it in. Turn the body a little bit with the parry. There you go. Good. Good. Now I'm going to come around the top of it. So just stiffen it up. There you go. Good. And then you can slip outside of the two. Good. Good. Okay. The three. You brought the three well. Defense is to the opponent's three. Going to simply slide that glove up in that position here as the, as the opponent's three comes. So here, I'm going to go to your body, drop it all down. Head, body, head, good. And then <laughs> off of the three, when you've blocked it, you counter with your own three. Come right straight back. There we go. Good. Good. And the four, opponent blocking my four by turning and having your left elbow in here. Good. That's it. Good, and then you can counter with a two. Good. And blocking an opponent's five. Good. And block my five and counter with your three. Good, same thing. One more. Good, okay. That's essentially it then. Bl uh, catching, parrying, slipping inside, outside, ducking under, or stepping away from. And you use on each of the punches wherever it's appropriate. Now that we've dealt with the five basic punches, how to put them together in various combinations, 
how to defend against the opponent throwing any of those punches. We pretty well have the essence of the sport of boxing. And I can tell you boxing is a relatively simple sport, but very, very unforgiving of making mistakes, of having a hand low, having the feet moving improperly. These are the things that'll make it impossible for you to land your punches well, and it'll get you hit a lot more by the opponent. So remember these very simple basics of what we do with our feet, how we hold and place our hands, and how we throw the basic punches. Repetition after repetition after repetition will get to the point where when you are in a boxing match and you get hit a bit, things may get a little bit fuzzy, at least then you're gonna have the thousands of repetitions that you did performing the basic fundamentals correctly to fall back on. You're gonna be able to, to defend against the opponent's punches till everything clears, and then you bring your punches at just as you learned here how to throw them. If correctly done, you've reduced the chances a lot of being hit by your opponent, have increased the chance of you landing your punches. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and feel free to criticize wherever you like, and we'll have a reason and a response for everything that we suggest that you do. Thank you.